Dear students, today we will be discussing about fuel cell technologies. See what are the key discussions we will cover today is concept of working of fuel cell, classifications of fuel cells, efficiency of a fuel cells, then concept of fuel cell power plant. So, let us learn some of the historical event before we start our basic fundamentals of fuel cell technologies. This fuel cells discovered in 1838 by German scientist Christian Frederick Schoenwein. The first fuel cell was demonstrated by Sir William Robert Grove in February 1839. The United Technologies Corporations in short UTC power subsidiary was the first company to manufacture and commercialize a large stationary fuel cells or we can say fuel cell systems that was used for cogeneration purpose. And finally, it was used in hospitals, universities and large office buildings. The UTC power continues to market as pure cell 200 that means it is a 200 kilowatt system. So, they are pioneer in this field. So, let us now learn what are the basic components of a fuel cell. Fuel cell is an electrochemical device that converts the chemical energy of the fuel and an oxidant directly into electricity. So, you can see here in this figure it has three primary components. We have electrolyte and one side is anode and other side is cathode. In anode fuel is supplied it may be hydrogen that means pure hydrogen or maybe hydrogen hydrazine and in cathode we have to supply oxygen or maybe air. It depends what kind of oxygen we use in a particular set of fuel cells. And at the end what we will get is water and heat. Okay? So, next move on to the next slide. So, why this fuel cell is impressive for power generation? Because it emits less emission and releases very less pollutant during the operation. It is quite in operation as it is a static device and it has got higher conversion efficiencies since it is a direct conversion. This plant can be used as a decentralized power generation systems. We do not have to use grid connected system. So, in such places where there is no grid connections, we can use this technology for power generation. And the heat which is generated during the operation can be easily removed and discharged to the atmosphere or we can use the heat locally if we could figure it out for some kind of applications. Due to modular nature, any voltage current level can be realized and the capacity can be added based on the demand. So, that is the beauty of the technology. This fuel cell plants are compact and require less space. So, in 1 kilowatt size will be something like 1 feet and then you know, 1 feet is the length I should say and height may be you know, uh, half a feet. Okay? In that compact system we can generate 1 kilowatt, but if you compare the other technologies we need to have a you know, very big configurations and there will be lot of moving components. A fuel cell plant can be used efficiently at varying load conditions. So, it may be you no know, varies from say 20 percent to 100 percent. So, at different conditions this can, this can be used. And if we talk about its applications it has got multiple applications. We can use fuel cells in automotive applications, in spacecraft, backup power, 
submarines, auxiliary powers, then military and aerospace, then decentralized power and portable electronics. And also we can extend the applications in different fields. So it has got multiple applications. But only concern is like what kind of fuel to be used in what applications that we need to figure it out. Now let us learn how these fuel cells can be classified. So these fuel cells can be classified in different ways. One of the ways is based on the type of electrolyte. What kind of electrolyte is used for a particular fuel cells. So that way you can name those fuel cell types. So it may be phosphoric acid fuel cells. Here electrolyte is phosphoric acid. Alkaline fuel cells. So here electrolyte is KOH. Okay. Polymer electrolyte membrane fuel cells there will have a semi permeable membrane where proton can exchange. So it is a some kind of solid no membranes. Then we will have molten carbonate fuel cells then solid oxide fuel cells. If we talk about the classification based on the type of fuel and oxidant used it may be hydrogen, oxygen, hydrogen is pure hydrogen and oxygen is pure oxygen. It may be hydrogen rich gas and air. So some elements are present along with the hydrogen in this case. And the third case may be hydrazine and oxygen hydrogen peroxide. And we can have ammonia air, synthesis gas air, hydrocarbon which is in gaseous form and air and hydrocarbon liquid form and air. Here I must mention one thing sometimes you can use fuel without doing any preparation like hydrogen if you have then directly you can use it for power generation through fuel cell technologies. But sometimes say for example we have ammonia first this ammonia has to be converted to hydrogen then we can use it in the fuel cell applications okay? that no before utilizing in the fuel cells we need to do some kind of processing in order to make usable for fuel cell applications. Again these fuel cells can be classified based on the operating temperatures. It may be low temperature if the operating temperature is less than 150 degrees Celsius. Medium temperature if the operating temperature is in between 150 degrees Celsius to 250 degrees Celsius and high temperature if each operation is in between 250 degrees Celsius to 800 degrees Celsius and very high temperature operations if the temperature range varies from 800 degrees Celsius to 1100 degrees Celsius. We have two more categories of classifications based on the applications. We can apply fuel cells in space applications, vehicle propulsion, submarines, defense applications and commercial applications. So here we need to specify the kind of fuel to be used for a particular application. Say for example, if we are talking about space application then we have to provide 99.99 purity hydrogen, okay? that too in liquid form. And then last categories of classifications is based on the chemical nature of the electrolytes. It may be acidic electrolyte, it may be alkaline electrolyte or it may be neutral electrolyte. Now let us learn how a fuel cell works. So for example, for our understanding let us consider phosphoric acid fuel cell. So let me draw the schematic of phosphoric acid fuel cell. So, I will make this this is electrode okay, make it right here. 
Okay. And then we'll have one more cyanocline. This is a rough sketch. Fine. So I'll extend this. Again, I can extend this. And of course, I can extend this as well, but it is fine. So, here is the fuel. This may be hydrogen or hydrogen rich gas. Okay. And we will have this is porous electrode, these two are electrode. Normally, this is made of nickel and we will have this is negative electrode and this is positive electrode. And this is normally made of silver. So, this is your oxidizer or oxidant, I should write, it is a oxidant, the oxidant and it may be oxygen or air. Okay. So, we can hence it. When? And this is the spent oxidant. This is spent fuel. So, here hydrogen is supplied and oxygen is supplied here, right. And this is the space through which proton exchange takes place like hydrogen. Okay. And this is anode and this is cathode. Okay. So, this phosphoric acid fuel cell was discovered in 1980s. Right. And as you can see, we have two electrode. This is negative electrode is known as anode where fuel is supplied. And this is positive electrode known as cathode and oxygen is supplied in the cathode, right. And here I can draw one electric connection which is which tells about load, this is load, okay, this electron flows here, right. So, I would like to write the chemical reactions what is taking place. So, as soon as this hydrogen enters here, then what will happen? This hydrogen is converted to hydrogen ion and then equal amount of electron. So, this will be 2 hydrogen, 2 electron, right. And this happens here in the anode, right. And what happens? This hydrogen ion will transfer through this electrolyte. So, here electrolyte is phosphoric acid, phosphoric acid that is why the name is phosphoric acid fuel cells. And then this electron what is generated here, it goes through this load and then again you no know, entered in the positive electrode which is cathode, right. So, what happens there? This half of oxygen, half of oxygen will react with this hydrogen ion plus electron, then what we will get is H2O. Okay? 
So, this happens here in the cathode and this reactions took place in anode. Okay. So, if we have to write this overall reaction, it will be something like hydrogen plus half of oxygen is nothing but H 2 O. Of course, some amount of heat and electricity will be generated. So, this is your overall reactions. Okay. Overall reactions. Now, concern is why to make these electrodes porous? Because we need to promote reactivity, right? As soon as this hydrogen enters, what happens? This hydrogen will react with this electrode material. But normally, these electrodes are not so active. In order to increase the activity, then what we normally prefer to have a catalyst. Normally, platinum is used. But platinum is somewhat costly. So, people are in search of low cost catalyst in order to enhance the efficiency of a fuel cell. Right? And this porosity is advantageous because this gas you now interacts with this electrode and it promotes the chemical reaction. Right? So, this is just the basic configurations for a fuel cell, but when we are studying the other fuel cells, their difference will be like electrolyte. Okay? So, we, we, we can change the electrolyte and we can study the you know, characteristics of different fuel cells. So, maybe in the next class, we will study details about other kind of fuel cells and different kind of electrolyte used and how these reactions happens everything will be discussed in the coming classes. So, now let us understand the kind of fuel to be used in fuel cells. Of course, we can use hydrogen, we can use hydrazine, we can use ammonia, we can use hydrocarbon in gaseous form, we can use hydrocarbon in liquid form then synthesis gas and methanol. So, all this kind of fuel can be used in fuel cell applications, but one thing we must know some of the fuels need to be first converted to hydrogen then we can go for fuel cell applications. Right? Straight away we cannot use some of the fuels for power generation through fuel cell technologies. So, let us now learn about efficiency of fuel cell, how we can calculate the efficiency of a fuel cell. Okay. In fuel cells, the electrochemical reactions takes place whereby reactions are converted to produce in a steady flow process. So, we must know that its temperature and pressure of the flow streams remains unchanged. That we need to be concerned. And if we follow this strategy and use the first law of thermodynamics, then how we can write first law, first law of thermodynamics we are really interested to find out the Gibbs free energy. So, it is a maximum potential energy apart from kinetic energy and potential energy or say pressure volume energy. So, here the case is is a closed system. So, at constant pressure and temperature this first law of thermodynamics we can write something like delta Q minus delta W is equal to delta H plus delta kinetic energy 
kinetic energy plus delta potential energy. Okay. So, what is delta Q here? Delta Q is heat transferred to the steady flow stream from the surroundings. And delta W is the work done, work done by the flow stream flow stream on the surroundings. Okay. And this delta H here is the change in enthalpy, change in change in enthalpy of the flow stream from entrance to exit, exit of a fuel cell. Okay? Now, we can neglect the sense of kinetic energy and potential energy. If we neglect the sense of kinetic energy and potential energy of the stream, then this equation 1 equation 1 modifies to implies del w is something like del q minus del h right so this may be equation number 2 for del w to be maximum the process process must be reversible must be reversible so if the process is reversible and if we use the second law of thermodynamics then what will happen so i'll write by second law of thermodynamics for a reversible process by second law of thermodynamics uh, for the case of a reversible process for a reversible process delta Q is equal to T into delta S. Okay? This may be equation number 3. Right. So, now what our intention is we are trying to find out the Gibbs free energy. Okay. So, here what is T? T is the temperature of the process. This T is the temperature of the process which is remains constant. Okay. and delta S is the change in entropy. Right? So, now let us write the equation 2 which can be modified. What was the equation 2? It was delta W is del Q minus del H. Okay? Now, if you use the earlier expression here, so, del Q is something like we have 
t into delta s right. So, we can again further modify something like this should be your delta max right here. So, if this max you can write then this will be something like again you can rearrange it like you can have delta h minus t delta s ok. So, this may be equation number 4 fine. Now, if we write gives free energy expression which is nothing but g is h minus t into s and if we make delta g and here what we can write delta h minus t delta s minus s into delta t. So, as we know there is no change in temperature. So, this this will be 0. So, if we use this then we can modify this expression to delta h minus t delta s ok. So, this may be equation number 5. So, if you compare this equation that means delta h minus t delta s here delta h minus t delta s is something like your delta z that means delta w max is equal to delta z that is the maximum potential of the work. So, that is how what we can write is say for example, equation 4 implies delta d max is somewhat like minus delta z ok. So, this may be equation number 6. So, this is something like this ok. So, also we can uh, combine equation 3 and equation 5 then we can write by combining combining equation 3 and equation 5 how you can write delta z is equal to delta h minus delta q or we can write delta q is nothing but delta h minus delta g. So, this may be equation number 7 ok. Now, we can define the efficiency of conversion of a fuel cell. So, how we can write here like the efficiency efficiency of energy conversion of energy conversion of a fuel cell it is something like eta is equal to delta w to minus delta h ok and we can write what is the maximum efficiency this is one expression and if I am interested about maximum efficiency that is eta max is equal to delta w max to minus delta h which is nothing but here delta g divided by delta h because this is equal to minus delta g. So, minus delta g minus delta g cancel. So, finally, we will have min minus minus cancel. So, it will be something like this ok. So, this is the 
maximum conversion efficiency of a fuel cell. Now, if we have to find out the efficiency, can we do it like suppose if we are interested to find out the maximum conversion efficiency for say hydrogen oxygen cell and at 25 degree Celsius. So, what are things required? We need delta Z and delta H value. So, by using appropriate chart, we can get delta Z and delta H value. So, for this case for hydrogen oxygen cell, delta Z is minus 237191 kilojoule kazimol at 25 degree C and delta H value is minus 2858388 kilojoule per kg mole. Okay. So, if we substitute this value in this expression, then what is found is eta max is equal to approximately 0 0.83. That means, it is 83 percentage. Okay. So, this is how we can find out the efficiency of a fuel cell system. right? So, if this fuel senses and its operating temperature senses, this value will change and then accordingly, eta max will sense. Right. So, now we need to learn something about what is called uh, theoretical EMF of a cell from change in Gibbs free energy during the reaction. So, if we are interested about that, then how we can use it? Like we can use E is equal to delta Z divided by n into f and this is minus. Okay. So, what is n here? n is the number of electrons number of transferred per molecule per molecule of the reactant of the reactant and f is faraday's constant and its value is 965 0 0 coulomb coulombs per gram per gram mole sometimes we represent in g as well so gram mole ok. So, this can also be calculated for hydrogen oxygen cell at 25 degree C. So, it is something like this at 25 degree C. So, we know this delta G value and the F is known to us and N is what is the value of N here? N will be 2 here right and delta H is not required in this case. So, if you substitute in this expression these values then this E uh, that is EMF how much it will generate, we can substitute these values like delta Z is minus two, uh, 2, 3, 7, 1, 9, 1, and then we will have F is 96500 0, 0 multiplied by 2 n is 2. So, this is found to be 1.23 volt. 
okay so this is the emf generation okay so if we see there is a change in temperature then each value will change because delta g will change so here uh, in this case at 25 degree c e is found to be 1.23 volt as we go on increase the temperature say for example operating temperature is 200 degree c then approximately what we will get this emf value is approximately 1.15 volt so there is a reduction in emf values right so this reduction in emf values is sometimes known as you no know, polarization voltage so that means the difference between the actual and theoretical voltage is known as polarization and it is represented by vp right now let us learn about polarization how this happens and for that we need to learn iv characteristics of fuel cell so let us learn this iv characteristics of fuel cell so it uh, goes something like this so we can classify into three parts and this is in vertical axis is cell voltage cell voltage and horizontal axis is current density current density is id and we can write this is vc so this you can represent a this is b this is c okay so this portion is known as activation activation polarization activation polarization and this is basically a reaction rate loss and middle part b to c under the curve is internal resistance polarization internal resistance polarization polarization this is a resistance loss resistance loss and the last part is concentration polarization polarization and this normally you can say it is 1.23 stop 1.23 something like this okay so this um, activation polarization and it is also known as chemical polarization and this is related to activation energy carrier for the electron transfer process at the electrode certain minimum activation energy is required to be supplied so that sufficient number of electrons is emitted at low current densities significant number of electrons are not emitted so this energy is supplied by the output of the cell resulting in potential loss it can be reduced by an effective electrochemical catalyst and also by increasing the operating temperature for resistance loss or resistance polarization at larger current there is additional contribution from internal electrical resistance of the cell the internal resistance is composed of mainly of resistance of bulk electrolyte 
and interface contact resistance between electrode and electrolyte. The resistance polarization can be reduced by number one is using more concentrated electrolyte concentrated electrolyte number 2 that means high conductivity number 2 increasing the operating temperature increasing the operating temperature And number three, using proper shape and spacing, spacing of electrolyte. to reduce the contact resistance. And third category is like concentration polarization. So, this type of polarization tends to limit the current drawn from the cell. So, it is related to mass transport within the cell and may further be subdivided into two parts. First one is electrolyte polarization and second one is gas side polarization. So, here there are two classes is electrolyte polarization and second one is like B is gas side polarization. Okay. So, one side is because see in, in a, if you remember the cell, so we have these electrodes and we have electrolyte here. Okay. So, gas comes here and electrolyte will be you know touching this side of the electrode. right? So, that is how it is electrolyte polarization and then gas side polarization. right? So, uh, in case of um, electrolyte polarization, this is due to the slow diffusion in the electrolyte causing change in concentration at the electrode. So, this effect can be reduced by increasing the electrolyte concentration or by stirring the electrolyte. So, we need to have some kind of device which can agitate this material, we, we need some kind of stirrer. Okay. So, uh, that will know uh, increase the diffusion process. And the, the gas side, this, this side is the gas side, this cause due to again slow diffusion of reactants through the porous electrode to the site of reaction or slow diffusion of product away from reaction side. And we can reduce this effect by increasing the operating temperature of the cell. So, these informations are very very important while designing a fuel cell. Now, let us discuss some of the applications of fuel cell. Say for example, fuel cell power plant. So, here what you could see like we have fossil fuel and then we have fuel processing unit which generates hydrogen and carbon monoxide and then it goes to fuel cell modules. Okay. There we can produce DC electricity. right? So, the heat what it generates during the conversion process that can be again used in the fuel processing system. Right. And this control system controls everything like electric power conditioners, then switch gear and supply like demand side, how this has to be managed. So, everything is controlled by control unit. 
So, this is something like our fuel cell plant, but if we concentrate something say for a single cell and then the cells has to be connected in parallel and series to increase the voltage and current. So, when it is series then we are increasing the voltage, when cells are connected in parallel then we are increasing the current and then many more such kind of cells to be connected in series and parallel to get high voltage to operate a system like uh, in vehicular applications or maybe um, fuel cell power plants. So, it appears something like say if we consider a single cell say uh, we need to have some kind of separator. So, we need some kind of separator. So, it is something like this say I will make a block of this kind and we will have different layers. So, sometimes we will have this kind of system here and then one more layer will be here. Okay. So, this may be separator, this may be separator, this may be separator and uh, this is negative electrode. So, where fuel is applied and then we will have what is called electrolyte, electrolyte I can say matrix and then we will have positive electrode, this is positive electrode, positive electrode and then we will have some kind of air passes. So, we can have some passes, okay, this passes will be something like here, some passes will be there, this is air passes, air passes and then we have separators, separators. So, this constitutes a single cell. single cell right and then if we need to connect many cells then this cells this kind of cells has to be connected in series and parallel in order to produce higher uh, power and that can be applied for fuel cell uh, power plant right. So, uh, we will uh, just uh, summarize uh, what uh, we have uh, studied in this class. So, this is what uh, we are discussing. So, there are different cells are connected and this is like you no know, uh, for a single cell how uh, other components are uh, you no know, presence and this is uh, displayed here. Okay. So, let us summarize uh, what we have discussed today. Basically, we have discussed the concept of fuel cell and its construction and discussed the efficiency and uh, uh, IV characteristics of a uh, fuel cell and also uh, briefly discussed about uh, fuel cell power plants. So, in the next class we will be discussing different kind of fuel cells and its comparison and its application. So, thank you very much for watching this video. Mm -hmm.